let's get to the business for today and we will be big on Galamsey as you have heard me announce and we'll deal with other equally important matters. 26,000 ghosts receiving checks in their grave. How that happens, we'll get to find out. My guest this morning, Abdul Malik Kwekubako, editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper and a regular panelist. Professor Ransford Jampo, he is with the Department of Political Science, University of Ghana. He heads the Department of uh, European Studies. Also, the Honorable Inusa Fuseni, MP, Tamale Central, and ranking member, Legal, Constitutional, and Parliamentary Affairs. Nana Akumia, former Communications Director of the NPP, and now Managing Director, State Transport Company, STC. Nana Akumia just stepped out. He'll be back in a jiffy. Gentlemen, good morning, and welcome to News File. Good morning. Good Great. Morning. I'm particularly <laughs> happy that you are here this morning for this show because you uh, also started the crusade against uh, Galamse. And you have been telling the story of some of the difficulties that you encountered. So we'll get at first hand the benefits of some of the things that um, the minister, Amewu, Peter Amewu, may need from him to assist in the process. The show is brought to you by the kindest sponsorship of Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner. MTN, welcome to the new world. ACAP Compost Fertilizer, truly natural. Breeze ERP, an innovative product of WebSoft Solutions and Coral Paint. Paint your dream into reality. Now, we want to begin by looking at matters arising in the NDC. As you know, the question of who leads the NDC in 2020 is become very cri critical now. There's mudslinging, uh, flag-bearer, hopeful drafters. That's how I call them. Mudslinging, <laughs> flag-bearer, hopeful drafters. Campaigning all over the place ahead of a Congress that will look at the NDC's leadership. Who are they so far? Former Trade Minister, Ecos Pio Gabra. Second Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Alan um, Alban Bagwin. Former UPSA Vice Chancellor, Professor Joshua Alabi. Former NHIS CEO, Sylvester Mensah. The Suedro Declaration Breakaway and Retainee Guzitano. Speculated to partner Zanato Rawlings. <coughs> Minority Leader. Haruna Idrisu, whom Kukubako wants to tarry a little. And I'll come here once again, welcome. Good. Right. So, now, um, I, st I, start, I start with you, I start with you because you are in the NDC. Why the haste or rush to put these people I talk about, and they are all denying, and we know how it happens. They deny, oh, I'm, I'm uh, not yet. You wait a bit. Why the haste or rush to put themselves out there, even if through these often paid, you know, candidate drafters? Yeah, thank you so very much, and good morning to your viewers and my co-panelists. Prof, I listen to you. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> I'm also my good friend and I've here for a very long time. <laughs> Now, uh, uh, we, we must first of all uh, file a caveat. Uh, and the caveat is that uh, all these people whose names we are mentioning are uh, suspected or alleged to be involved or have presidential ambitions. And so they are going around uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, position themselves, put themselves in pole position 
in the event that the NDC opens uh, primaries uh, uh, in two years' time. I mean, the Constitution is quite clear. Our Constitution Article uh, uh, 41, as vigorously amended, uh, states clearly that when the party is in power, uh, we go to Congress 12 months to elections. Uh, when the party is in opposition, we go to Congress in the four months to elections. Now, uh, 24 months starts counting the day we lost elections and the day a new government is sworn in. Uh, uh, if a party loses power, many people will assign reasons why the party has lost power. And some will attack the sitting presidential candidate incumbent who was in, in the seat when we lost power. Mm. And so what is happening is jostling. I mean, people are jostling to be able, first of all, to be known, and secondly, the proposition that so it's deliberate. It's deliberate. It's deliberate. I mean, all of them are clearly going around, I mean, uh, uh, forming uh, uh, groups, uh, 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 what is it, movements and whatnot, clearly with a view to and transforming. And yet denying to have anything to do with the groups. Well, they will deny because one, the constitution of the party does not, in, I mean, allow for such things to happen. Uh, because it threatens the, the foundation of the party, so the, pa the, cost the party will not look kindly onto such uh, maneuvers at this time. Two, the, uh, uh, we have lost elections. Uh, we want to know why we lost the elections. We formed a committee. The committee is still going around collecting the evidence of uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, performance of the party in the recently ended elections. The committee has not yet presented its, its report. Uh, we have not gone to organize the branches yet. We have not organized the constituencies. Uh, we have not elected the, uh, the regional executives. We have not elected the national executives. And so, I mean, it, it, it seems it's too early in the day for anybody to start, I mean, uh, going around trying to uh, uh, woo or, or, or uh, somehow make himself relevant to the process of uh, 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 <coughs> elections in 2020. But our party, our party is an equal op opportunity party. I mean, that one you should, you should understand. That is why many people, and, the, and you should also look at the uh, positive aspects of what is happening, even though uh, there are clearly uh, political maneuvers being done now. Uh, because it's an equal opportunity party, a party as young as the NDC, we have produced uh, presidents from three regions so far, from the Volta region, from the uh, 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 central region, and from the northern region. And, and uh, we have uh, opened up the, uh, the, the chances of any individual who is qualified and by, under the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana and by the N a NDC Constitution to put himself up for uh, the contest. So people know that it is quite possible uh, as an ordinary person, as any other person, to emerge in the NDC and lead it to power. Two, uh, people are beginning to understand that probably our chances of returning to power so soon are bright. That's why clearly they are starting now. Uh, because uh, they are seeing some policy inconsistencies and incoherences. They are seeing some uh, uh, clear uh, uh, inability to uh, fulfill some of the promises that were made. Uh, they are seeing some backtracking. Uh, Ghanaians are beginning to talk. I mean, and uh, so, so six, five months or so after elections, people are already beginning to be despondent. And so clearly, uh, all that is feeding into the jostling that is taking place now. And I, I believe that uh, when the process is done, when the, 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 the deed is done, when we finally organize our branches, when we finally organize our constituencies, when we organize the region and elect the regional executives, organize and elect the national executives, then the, the time would have been due for anybody. Because you see, Samson, many things have come up. <clears throat> In the last elections, we, we, as a mass party, we decided that we we're going to involve every card-bearing member of the NDC in determining the leadership of the party at the constituency level. And we tried it on the MPs. That brought in this week difficulties, difficulties of reconciliation after uh, the, the event. Now, there is talk that probably that was a good idea, involving everybody, the Greek style of democracy. Mm -hmm. Everybody who matters... Ukrainian democracy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah must, must take part in determining whoever emerges as the leader of the party. But then, because larger groups of people are involved, reconciliation becomes difficult. And one reason why we performed so badly in the, in the recently ended elections has been attributable to, to or attributed to that, 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 that uh, 
uh, experiment that we mm. undertook. So clearly, if you are uh, 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 jostling for position, unless, of course, you want to be known in the party now, you, are, you want your name to come out, and so people will know that X, Y, Z is also preparing himself for a leadership position in the party. Because who are going to be the delegates? Mm. You might not know now. But, but what's going on? Is it good or bad? What is going on is clearly good. And except that, except that we should cut off mad slinging. If a party, MPP will not be in power for, forever. Mm. It will lose elections one day. Right. And so, I mean, if a party loses elections, and they've lost elections before, NDC has lost elections before. Now, so if a party loses election, what it ought to do, and rightly so, is to, to, to investigate and see why it lost elections. And that's what we are doing. Mm. And, and, and unless, of course, you, are, <laughs> you, have, you rece receive divine guidance from uh, the uh, uh, extemporal world, and then, then you can say that, well, after my party, it will continue to be in power forever. So, since the party will not be, NPP will not be in power forever, and, uh, and uh, might leave power so soon, we might have to, to cut down on mass again because the mud that you threw, the ball that you threw onto the wall, comes back to you. The, the, the angle might be different, but it returns to almost the position that you were when you threw the ball. And people who are now dispassionate observers of the polit political maneuvering and the name calling and the mass slinging that is going on, are cataloging mm. all these things. And right. then when we finally settle and the deal is done mm. and the presidential candidate is chosen, you'll be surprised how they will throw that mud at the mud that we threw. So like you say, like they say, politicians are best of person. The MPP will not be in power forever. And when is the Professor Kwesi Boche report expected? And why use that to, <coughs> as you know already, that is being used to muffle those who are pitching their interest for now. They are being told, hold on, wait until the Boche report is out. Well, that, that is mutually exclusive. I mean, if you want to be a, a presidential candidate, I mean, the, the, apart from going around and I mean, and it's done. People go clandestinely, organize groups, come, I mean, in the various regions. Uh, they, these become the nucleus of the groups. And so it's like fire in cotton wool. Uh, it, it takes a long time for you to know that there is fire there. So people go around and then they set in the, the, their groups, their committees. Mm. And so I seriously, I mean, as a politician, I'll say that what people say openly and exhort and, and call on people to hold their horses until the committee's report is out. It's neither here nor there. Okay. <laughs> because people will go out anyway. All right. Okay. All right. And so, uh, and it's mutually exclusive. Mm. Even the committee's report, Boche's report, is mutually exclusive to the reorganization of the party. Okay. Okay. Boche's report has clear and defined terms of preference, <laughs> determining exactly mm. what cause the defeat of the okay. party. Let me see how, how um, Dr. Jampo takes it off from here. Well, I, how, how, maybe we should start from this point. How will knowledge of the obvious reasons for the NDC's shambolic performance influence who wants to contest as flag bearer? So wait until we have the report. Well, um, I mean, to some extent, um, it, it would have some influence um, if we um, come to terms with the fact that maybe the certain or the former president, I mean, because of certain acts of omission or commission, you know, resulted, you know, accounted for their electoral defeat. Some people may say that um, as a result of that, let us think of replacing him and then let's, let's bring another person on board. If it turns out that, well, he didn't do anything shoddy or he didn't do anything that may have accounted for the electoral defeat, then, um, I mean, it would also have its own implication. But he let says me, it was a lame horse. It was not the rider of the horse. Well, I, I don't know about that. Let's, let's wait. So that's why in their own wisdom, they have 
instituted the Kwesi Butri Comi um, Committee to look into some of these things. But then I could see some contradictions in what Inusa was trying to um, say. I mean, one point um, he said it's the constitution frowns on it. Another point he said um, it is good. And I don't know what. I know for me it is a normal politicking um, that people would want to put their names out there to test their own popularity and to test their own acceptance. But it is a very risky move um, because one may genuinely be um, a fine <coughs> presidential um, material, but if you are unable to act politically, tactic, um, politically in a tactful manner, um, then you, are, you, you, you may not be able to um, sort of court the needed support that you are looking for for yourself. If you don't act politically tactful in ensuring that the timing for putting out your name is right, then your ambition may be crushed and mm. it may not be, you, it may not surface, you know, again, because now you see some names that came out and have started receiving criticisms and all that. If you don't take time, you may be a very good presidential material, but that ambition may be crushed and it may not surface again. I'm aware some are also interested. I mean, some names have come and have, have popped up. And, but for some, they believe in lobbying behind the scene, um, doing one-on-one, -on -one, talking to people. And this is done with the view to ensuring that by the time your name pops up, there is a certain critical mass of supporters who support you. Mm. There is some form of elite consensus among the top echelons of the party who would <laughs> give you their nod and support of, once your name comes up. And so for me, it smacks of political immaturity for one to commit such a suicide by putting his name there around a timing that can be described as inappropriate. <coughs> and let's note that political maturity uh, is not necessarily coterminous with longevity in politics. You may have worked in politics for all your life, but you may not be mature. So I'm saying that it is important that people act, but act timelessly. They act with... Um, if there are processes, as he rightly said, if the constitution frowns on this particular timing for people putting out their names, so be it. If they want to wait for Kwesibotri committee to bring its um, report so that they will know what went wrong, I mean, why can't people um, wait? It is a political situation. Necessarily, people would want to be given the no. People would want to compete and contest um, for positions and all that. But why do you want to act in a manner that um, may possibly amount to political suicide, you, would, you may end up crushing your own ambition because if the name comes out and so many people feel that you are being selfish, you are being selfish. Is that your verdict not? that people are acting towards committing political suicide at this time? Yeah, my view is that um, given the criticisms that have started coming up you know, against some names, um, these may be fine political you know, uh, um, presidential materials people who can lead the party as flag bearers. But if you don't put out the name, if you don't do your own um, um, workings behind the scenes to ensure that by the time your name comes up, there is a critical mass of people supporting it, then your ambition may be crushed. But this mudslinging is unavoidable, irrespective of when you pitch you know, your, your interests. Well, but you know, there seems to be a general consensus among um, so far, people that I've heard um, saying that the timing is it's, it's not appropriate, even though they appreciate the fact that um, um, some of these things would go on. But then he said it, but ended up also contradicting himself. But the timing is not, it's not too appropriate. And so, yes, all the names that have come up, in my view, they are fine people who may be able to um, lead the NDC as flag bearers. Mm -hmm. But it is important that... Is it, a, is it a matter of contradicting is, himself yeah, yeah. or being practical and speaking to reality well, but that you cannot stop the people and that they must of necessity begin now you know, but, why but do you make it official at the time the constitution allows i don't think so why do you say it is um, the constitution frowns on it and then still say uh, and then go on to say <coughs> you have to wait um, for Kwesibo Trace Committee's report to come out and then still say um, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I think um, um, it is important that um, um, we stick to a certain position. Mm. If it is right, it, it's right. Yeah, let let wrong, him clarify uh, something quickly. Wrong. Yes. Um, so, Prof, I, I think that uh, let him try to reconcile what I said. I, the constitution clearly 
is quite clear on this matter. But what I'm saying is that on the ground, and you have said it, people will build critical mass. You don't build critical mass when they open the contest for flag bearership. You build critical mass. You agree mass. with that? Yeah, but what they are doing is not <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> no, I, I, I said that no. I, I, I'm, for, I'm for going on radio and, or people publishing and put, putting posters. Definitely, that, that's not on the ground. Yeah. No, no, that's <laughs> all about. Mm. But yeah. people on the ground will move. Well, if you close your eyes to that reality, you and you want you have presidential mm. ambitions, you might be caught. In and he doesn't seem to agree with you when you say that the Boche report and what the reorganization of the party are mutually exclusive. They are mutually exclusive. Very mutually exclusive because okay. because mm. that was to determine why we lost, mm. and we can reorganize the party with that waiting for the come. It will not show us how to uh, reorganize the party. Well, then what's the point in putting in putting up that um, committee if if you can go ahead without waiting for them? Then was it an ex is it supposed to be an exercise that, in futility? No, why that, that clearly that clearly that clearly is to enable you determine, mm. and you have pointed out one reason. Who, I mean, what were the causes of the, the remote and immediate causes of the... And that, the if it were, if it were the president, yes. then he would be jettisoned. That's, yeah, that's yes, a point that's you made. Point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. let's, hear, let's hear from, let's hear from Nana Kumia. Nana Kumia. Um, already there are those who are saying, well, the, Isia Dunketia had, had cause to say that there were how many thieves, uh, the seeking to be president of this country, and now the NDC <coughs> appears to be getting to a similar era, even though Johnson S. Edwin Ketia says this is healthy for the party. The fact that many people are showing interest is healthy for the party. Hmm. Well, thank you, Samson. Um, let me wish my good friends and yourself a good morning. I like your shirt, the black and white combination. Thank you. Latida now, always does it well. Very good. Now, the um, all of us must sympathize with the NDC, what they are going through. I mean, here's a party that has suffered the biggest electoral defeat in the Fourth Republic, both parliamentary and presidential. The defeat that they suffered has never happened before in the Fourth Republic. So the party is clearly in shock, very deep shock, especially when they were the incumbent with the incumbent president taking part in the elections. To suffer that this kind of defeat will really demoralize an in in the institution. So the NDC, you can't run away from it. They are in a very demoralized state, and they are in a state of shock. So we must sympathize with what they are going through at the moment. Um, this uh, jostling for presidential uh, is it's uh, quite normal at this stage, especially when they are going to have the election next year. The, presiden the presidential primaries, they're mm. going to elect the flag bearer next year. Mm. Now, like uh, my brother Inusa said, they are not going to go through the party reorganization. Reorganization means, in my view, just electing new people to the structures. That's all. I mean, the party is already on the ground. And reorganize doesn't mean people are going to be sad or some new structures or some new policies or some new ideologies. No, it's all there. But <coughs> the people have to go through elections from the bottom level up to the top. That's what is going to start. So you're going to have a polling station or branch, as they call it, branch level to constituency level to regional levels to national levels all are going to take place within the next one and a half years to elect a national executive and then they will move on to elect the flag bearer. Now, all these elections, the branch to constituency, they are going to be influenced by personalities who have a goal of leading the party as flag bearer. So, it's important that they start making their moves now because they are going to go down to the branch levels and seek to influence the election of people who they believe can be on their side. The whole flag bearer election depends on these preceding elections. And if you sit aside and, and 
just watch the process go on without getting involved. By the time the elections are complete at the national level, you would find out that you are now going to start to get to know people and cut them. But you want to influence those elections. You want to set up organizations that are going to see that people are elected at a branch level. And, and those people are able to elect people who may be on your side at the constituency levels. And those constituency level people are going to influence people who will be elected at the regional executive levels. And those people are also going to make sure they get some of your people at the national elections. Because the, the preceding level elects the next level. So you have to get your organization on the ground. And so you have these names popping up and so on. Um, I believe that because of the, need, the timing of the elections, just next year, the incumbent, if he decides to contest, may have an advantage because he's the incumbent. And mm. the structures, his structures will still be on the ground as against those people who are now coming to challenge. Okay, who now have just to hold on structures. one minute. Let's hear about Bagbing. And I want you to tell me what you think of Bagbing, uh, spokesperson of Bagbing. And I want you to tell me what you think of him and the ex-president. Bagbing absolutely has also noticed it this afternoon, but he's not aware of who has manufactured it. So what may be the reason? Uh, I think uh, it's, it's part of a clarion call from the masses of NDC on the ground. It has been happening since the party uh, got that wonderful defeat at pools, that uh, we need somebody in the middle ground, somebody who can pull people from left, right, back and forward to a middle ground in the party so that we all move forward. We know very well that one of the problems that led to the defeat of the NDC in the pools is the seemingly sealed disunity among us. We now need the people at the grassroots are tired of that division and they see Honorable Alabambagui as a person whose political career has been one of bringing people together, building consensus and moving forward in a better direction. So he is unaware of this posture, but you also talk about lack of leadership for the NDC. So if he puts his name forward, will, you, will, you, will the people vote for him? I think uh, Honorable Albambagwin has always shown to be that one particular person who stands up when almost everybody is afraid to speak in the party. He has been that particular person who stands up and says that things are actually going wrong and that we need to chart a better course. This is a character in the man who has led the party straight up from opposition for eight years into power and has maintained his position in parliament a bit outside and back in to lead the party. So he says that he speaks for the Honorable Abam Bagwin. And you may have heard um, uh, clips of Abam Bagwin himself being played, where he says that uh, when he was in school as Bagwin. a child, and when Absolutely. he was asked uh, what was his, his, his dream in life, what he wanted to be in future, <laughs> he told his teachers that he wanted to be president. Nana, will he be a better president than all those who are you know, pitching? No, uh, I still believe that if, if the incumbent John Mahama decides to contest, he will be the man to beat, especially if they are going to have four or five contestants. Okay. Because you see, the incumbent, he has an organization on the ground mm. by reason of the fact that he's the incumbent. Mm. All these district chief executives who are stalwarts of the party at the district levels, and the constituency levels, all these ministers of state, all, that is an organization. His war chest will be better fortified. His war chest is bigger, and the organization, you are starting from scratch to build up uh, uh, structures on the ground to, to prosecute your campaign. He already has them. Uh, so he has the advantage. Mm. Of course, there would always be surprises. Okay. But Bagbin, because of his experience and all of that, is clearly a very qualified uh, uh, candidate. But my brother here um, talked about that there's some excitement in the NDC. And conclude on that. They, they believe um, they will come back into office in the next four <laughs> years. I mean, of course, he is laughing at his own jokes. I would have been surprised if he didn't comment on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as he was speaking, I was looking at him. His nose was okay. twitching. That's what it, most of them are saying, though. It, well, but it, it, they, have to console, they have to console themselves. Because very clearly, 
the situation on the ground. If this is a party that believes mm. that it is going to come in, into office in the next four years, mm. what is all of this, as he himself called it, name calling and mad slinging? <laughs> if you are a party that is properly positioned to take over office in, in 2020, what is all this mad slinging? There was a lot of infighting in the NPP. <laughs> it believed that it was able to come back to power right after the first uh, the term of the uh, President Mills. Yeah, so those are difficulties that show that the difficulties in which we were at that period. It were not complacent. We didn't go about saying we we're going to win. There were difficulties, and we recognized those difficulties, and we worked towards re resolving okay. those difficulties. Right. As we speak, a party that is in office in form, uh, for four months, and you are saying people are already tired because there's policy inconsistency, and there's what incoherence and backtracking. My brother, Ghana is going to see a <coughs> government never seen before in this fourth republic. And clearly, the signs are there for all to see. The president has shown a certain decisiveness that we haven't seen in the fourth republic in dealing with the critical issues that affect us as a nation, that all of us have cried about, but we are not able to do because of political indecisiveness. Of course, he, he has 110 men to do that, 10 women. Yes, um, let's hear he has shown mm. that leadership, <laughs> political leadership is going to be taken to a new level. And my brother Inusa, and my brother Inusa, would be pleasantly surprised <laughs> at the levels okay. of, right. of right. that let's, let's, uh, let's Nana hear from, is going to take Let's hear country. from Kweku. But I, I forgot, and it's not too late, to mm -hmm. congratulate you on your appointment to, the, be man, to be manager as manager of the STC. I am very hopeful, uh, very positive that you will make sure that we get back to the days when STC yeah. was the preferred you know, transportation. Yeah that Thank all you. of us uh, wanted. Sometimes I don't want to fly, I don't want to drive, I want to get into a bus, but I'm not too sure. Mm. STC gave you that comfort, that uh, safety, you know. So yeah, we hope that you're able to do that for you. us. Thank you. It's, it's right. Those days are going to come back. Thank you. <laughs> right. Koku? Well, just a lighter. There is no guarantee that <laughs> by the fourth year, we will still have 110 ministers. I I can see in the crystal ball, it's reducing mm. by that time. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it, it would. Could uh, you attend your, your lecture? Uh, no, he wasn't there. No, <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> which, which one? <laughs> and then there's one thing that I've, I've had challenges with, and I hope uh, Nana Komiya will not be offended in any way, and I know he wouldn't be. I have a difficulty with the government appointees, with the status that he has, uh, being constant participants on programs like this. Okay. I have a challenge with that. Maybe Nana should reconsider and let the other communicators come and do the business mm. rather than he himself. He's actually, past that stage. Yes, I, for I, good I, reasons. Quite, quite good. Um, actually, the, the the person who had been pending for this program the, for today for today had to be uh, excused at the last minute. He had some issues to deal with at the constituency. So okay. I was asked last night as a kind of emergency if I could stand in. Okay. But you can also agree that me, you know, I'm fair to everybody. Right. Um, I'm fair to the NDC. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. A really good one. You see, a fantastic communicator. Right. There's no doubt about it. Right. But it's a challenge I've had for a long time, you know, mm. for good reasons. Mm. Uh, well, and DC is in a certain transition, post election defeat transition. It's not a first time. 2000 post-2000 election defeat, they went into a reorganization mode uh, that came with some constitutional reforms, you know, to change the face of the party. I think that they really began to develop as a political party post-2000. Yeah. And they've done well relative to that exercise. Uh, they are back in opposition, which is, I think, a good thing for this country. And uh, they're going back to reorganization. Uh, Kusibutri's committee, and the work it's doing, and the recommendations that the committee may come out with uh, could help them to chat away forward. But I agree with uh, what has been said here. Uh, the human element is such that even if it's not time, 
even if there is not an official declaration of the contest. The human element is such that people would begin to do all those things. And some of the things we are discussing, the names and things, are you know, speculative. Some are premature. But there's a contest, and we all know. We are not naive. So we know that these things are happening. The names coming up, they are all good names. Uh, Bagbin is a formidable political player in the NDC. Look at his long period in parliament. Mm and the positions is held both in parliament and outside parliament. It's, it makes him a formidable... He's done over two decades in parliament. Yes, yes, and I, I respect that thing a lot, let me be honest with you. Unless you are a dummy, you know, completely useless, parliament is itself a school. It trains you, it builds you, it gives you a lot of insight into society and experience. So there's no doubt, and he's, he's, he's quite a credible politician, you know, lawyer and everything. So he's a formidable contestant. Spiel Gabra and all the rest. Spiel is also somebody you can consider as credible and things. There are a few names that I think are in there for comic relief. Uh, for fair, in terms of fairness, I won't mention <laughs> their names. I'm just highlighting those that I think have But been. you have mentioned that Haruna should wait. Yes, he's a fantastic gentleman, young man. He appears to have some huge support though. I like him a lot mm -hmm. and I think he'll do well. He speaks well. Sometimes, of course, we all do mischief. Why not? We all play our propaganda. None of us is uh, free of that. But he's one gentleman I really admire. He speaks well. Look at his level at this stage. Minority leader at this stage, that's big. But I don't think he's a ready-made presidential material. He needs to groom himself. He needs to grow. He needs to... Timing is critical for somebody like Haruna Idrisu. He makes the move now, I'm not sure you have some success. It's not the best time for him. That's my candid opinion. Mm. You know? But otherwise, it's a great potential. Yeah. I go with Akomia. <clears throat> with all the aspirants, potential aspirants lining up, within the context of their primaries, I see nobody as competitive or more competitive than John Mahama. And for good reasons. Look, look at even their tradition. Mills, Professor Mills, because of the street rule declaration. He had become vice president, of course, before the street rule declaration. That gave him an advantage. Mm. Mr. Dr. Kusibuchi contested him. It was virtually like a mismatch, apart from the, you know, the agitations and attacks and things that more or less neutralized Kusibuchi. Even at the Congress, if you recall the Legon Congress, mm -hmm. the things that happened there. But it was obvious that the advantage was the good old professor, he clicked it. Subsequently, he had challenges. And those were the times the NDC was introducing competitive uh, politics elections into their uh, calendar, you know. So uh, he had it. He beat Spio Gabra, Eddie Annan, and all the rest. The same with uh, Mr. Mahama. The vice, he was a vice president. We all know what happened. A tragic incident happened. So he became a president, and he towered. Mrs. Rawlings tried against Professor Mills. It was an abysmal performance. Mm -hmm. By their tradition, Akomia is right. The leading light there, in this case, John Mahama, I think will scale over everybody. That is different from what his performance will be come the national election. We're not, that's not where the emphasis is. Yes, the distinctive emphasis here is on their internal contest. And the, the potential of each uh, competitor. I see nobody, in spite of Bagwin's presence, in spite of Spio Gabra, I see nobody who has enough to compete with Jamahama and win. Based on what they are going through, I don't know, uh, maybe Fusini will know better, they're still talking of some problems with their electoral role. So one will look at it. They've expanded. There's no doubt about that, which is good. And that gives John Bahama still an advantage. But I've heard people query the credibility or authenticity of the electoral rule. Maybe that could be amended and things. But bottom line, look, before the presidential thing, uh, I'm sure your uh, elections for the executive positions, yeah. national, regional, district, constituency, branch, come before, or yeah. am I right? Yes. Yes. So they should put the emphasis on, the, on that. They yeah. should make sure they cure the 
lame horse so that whoever perhaps we can cure. <laughs> cure, I said. Yeah, I said cure, not cure. cure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe I do. <laughs> no, they, they, they need to cure the lame horse. <laughs> no, okay. Get it healthy. Mm. So that perhaps uh, whichever jockey mm. eventually emerges could have a good ride. But clearly you would prefer okay. being killed. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> right, so, um, uh, but just, just you, a small point, I just want to emphasize the point. I agree with um, the comments that Kweku and um, Manakumi have made. And the point I'm making is that to the extent that some of these jostlings are taking place behind the scenes and they are not popping up at the, on the national scene, I agree. Mm -hmm. But if it comes out like that and it, create, it creates an impression as if um, people are agitating for a particular person mm -hmm. and another, I mean, then it creates confusion. Yeah, and, yeah. and then mm -hmm. that's what yeah. I refer to okay. as, you know, I understand, you know, but unfortunately, the right. human element, the ambitions okay. of right. human uh, beings. Uh, as far as Bagwing is concerned, I invite you to read um, an opinion piece, some analysis, uh, fantastic, done by Dr. Eche Sikanko, you know him, the man who wrote about the Afrocentric Obama. Uh, go read about that, and you find very interesting points that you're still here on News where, where can we get that? Um, it's it's on it's published on myjournalonline.com. Okay. Yeah, uh, he has a lot of things he says that seems to favor um, favor bagwit, if you like, <laughs> and some other computations that needs to be considered. Yes, sir.